Hey guys and welcome to the next tutorial of ethical hacking and penetration testing via Kali Linux. So in this tutorial I will be starting up with the meter printer prompt. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and start my virtual machine. So in previously in my, most of my tutorials I have actually gone through most of the commands in meter printer prompt but I have not told you what exactly it is and how exactly it works. So in this tutorial, we will be covering all the, or the one of or most of the things about meterpreter prompt and uh, yeah. After you have done this, then you will know exactly how it works and how we can go ahead and use that to go ahead and grab different sessions from your target's computer. Let's start it up. Okay. So before I proceed, let me give you a brief introduction. Midipreter has been successfully integrated into Metasploit framework that is MSF console. So it can be accessed through a number of different payloads. And Midipreter has not only been implemented on Windows, but its principle and design are fully portable to a variety of operating systems such as including Linux. So you can also go ahead and download uh, the Metasploit if you don't have let's say for example for some reason you're not using Kali Linux for any random reason you have Ubuntu or let's say if you have Windows for let's say or even Mac then we have Metapreter prompt for that and but you, for that you need to install the Metasploit which I would be explaining in detail later on but as of now you can just go over here and download that for I believe Rapid7 is the are the people who are actually okay never mind so you can check it over here as Metasploit Pro is also there for community as well as the default one that's the free one uh, and I believe we also have it for the Windows version so let me check for which one it is exactly okay I was uh, redirected to the same page never mind Okay, so as you can see, we have it for uh, the Linux for 64-bit, 32-bit, and for Windows, that's only 64-bit. And I believe we don't have it for Mac. Yep, we don't have it for Mac. Never mind, but uh, we can still go ahead and start it in our virtual machine by using in any of the Unix or the Linux system. So coming back to our own screen, uh, the first thing that I would be teaching you would be the Windows 32 bind meterpreter. So this payload binds to a port on the target machine and waits for a connection and after the connection is established the meterpreter server is uploaded and the existing connection is used for the meterpreter communication channel after that we have windows 32 reverse meterpreter uh, and this payload connects back to the attacker on a given port the connection is then used to upload the meterpreter server after which point it is used for the uh, meterpreter communication channel so i'll just go over here and show you how exactly it looks like you can start it uh, through a lot of ways. I'm just giving an example. Let's say, for example, uh, let me check social engineering and payload and listener. I just type any random IP address. Uh, I, I, I'm not actually going ahead and creating anything, so I'm just showing you exactly how it works like. So, as I told you about Windows 32 bind meterpreter, that is this shell over here, and, then, and it's also available for 64 bit as well. Then we have the reverse shell that is the that's these three, and then we have Windows 32 uh, FC uh, find receive ORD meterpreter. So I don't know exactly where it is exactly. Maybe it will be there in um, some other payload. But Windows 32 find receive ORD meterpreter is a payload that searches for a file descriptor that the exploit was triggered from and uses it to upload the meterpreter server. After which point the connection is used for the meterpreter communication channel. So this payload is particularly uh, intriguing because it does not require that a new connection be opened and thus bypasses all firewall connections. Depending upon the exploit, any one of these payloads can be used. The most preferable payload is entirely dependent on uh, both the exploit and the conditions under which the exploit is being performed, such as firewall restrictions or uh, without firewall or otherwise so it, it isn't mine so after a payload has been selected the fun can begin the first step is to start the uh, metasploit client interface uh, through uh, and though metasploit provides a number of interfaces including msf web msf console msf cli 
we will be using MSF console for uh, this illustration purpose. So I'll just go ahead and start the terminal and I can just type MSF console. It will take quite a bit for it to start since it only has 1 GB of RAM. So we'll just quietly wait till it starts. Okay, I'll do one thing. By the time it starts, I'll go ahead and start my Windows 7. If for any other reason I needed this to I needed to implement the payload on my Windows 7. This MSF console can take quite a bit of time to start if you are starting it for the first time because it needs to go and uh, develop all the caches. Okay, perfect. Let's see if we okay we don't have our payload that we created in our last tutorial. No mind, we'll just create it again. So now we just have to wait till this command prompt starts. Okay, perfect. So this is the awesome Metasploit banner. Uh, I believe uh, it looks like a cow or something. <laughs> Never mind. So um, yes. So once at this prompt, uh, the first thing that we need to do is pick up an exploit. So just for the sake of the demonstration, uh, I'll be using a tester exploit that is going to be used, which is simply an exploit that is used against a daemon that executes whatever code is thrown at it. So I'll just go ahead and type use tester. I believe the T should be capital. I don't remember exactly the last time I did. So let's let me check. Okay, I believe the T should be capital. Okay, I believe that I have not yet imported this uh, tester. But never mind. So if you have a module named as tester that you have actually uh, went ahead and imported this. So just assume that tester is some kind of payload and this is how you will go ahead and use it. I will be using uh, an actual payload later on or a module to go ahead and load and I'll show you. So just for the time being, just assume that tester is some kind of a module. So after selecting the tester exploit, the next thing to do is to select the payload that is to be used. So for demonstration, the Win32 uh, reverse meter payload will be used. So aside from that payload, it is also necessary to set variables that are required by the exploit and payload, such as the remote host, the remote port, which represent the target host, as well as the uh, local host and local port which are used uh, by the payload when connecting back to the attacker. So uh, the next thing that we would like to do is to go ahead and set payload. Uh, it will probably not work. The reason being that I have not yet loaded the module. Perfect. Perfect. So as soon as I set payload, it's giving me the option that set the given option to value. If value is omitted, uh, print the current value. Uh, so what it's saying me exactly is that after set payload, I need to go ahead and set uh, an option and a value. So after we have the set up some kind of payload, I'll just go ahead and type set payload, let's say win32 and I'll just type underscore reverse underscore meterpreter. Let's see if I'm able to go ahead and set this payload. Well, the payload is not valid, so let me check if it is in small. Okay, never mind. So this is how you go ahead and set up a payload. The reason being that Windows 32 Exploit is not yet here. So that's how it will look like. After that, uh, we have to go ahead and set the R host. And just let me be clear that the reason we are not getting any specified value for the payload is because this uh, we haven't used any tester module as of now. If we had used any kind of specific module only, then we will be able to load the payload because the payload is loaded after the tester. So if you go ahead and try to go ahead and uh, load the payload value or the R host before uh, using any specific uh, module then it won't work. So I will be going ahead and using that but for later option as of now I'm just giving you an idea exactly how it works. So after that we have to set an R host and that would be the remote host that would be my own computer's IP address so it would be 127.0 whatever your IP address would be I'm just using a random uh, IP address and after that once you go ahead and see this you need to set the R port that would be by typing R caps P O R T and then you have to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 5, 4 whatever your R port would be and so when you have set the R port then we need to go ahead and set the local host so that would be that means the computer which we are trying to attack so it would be L host and 
127.0.0.2 whatever and then okay it should be l host perfect and after that okay it should be l host perfect after that the final thing would be set l port and we can set the l port to anything 1279 and this is how the l port is set so finally with the payload and exploit defined it's time to fire up these engines and with that the meterpreter uh, connection is established and it's ready to be used so the first order of business is to issue the help command to get a feel for uh, what features are available so all of these commands are explained in detail in my tutorials and the most uh, useful for the point of illustration is the use command the this command allows for dynamically loading meterpreter extensions from anywhere these extensions are automatically uploaded to the target machine and then loaded from the memory. For example, let's say one of the extension allows for executing and killing processes as well as getting a list of running processes. So this extension is the process extension which can be loaded uh, by issuing uh, the um, command such as let's say for example use, you can type use hyphen m only after the process is executed you can go and type use minus m process. Uh, it won't work now because I have not yet executed the payload, but this is how it looks like. So, and after the extension has been loaded, the new command will be added to the help output. So, for process extension, uh, you can just go and type something like help, and it will give you everything. Over here, you won't see any stuff like that. The reason being that I have not yet uploaded the module because I have not even yet started the payload. That's why. But once you have uploaded the module and started the executed the payload, you will you will see this uh, process. Uh, module over here included but i believe that we already have a process named uh, module over here named as ps okay uh, okay i cannot see it but as soon as i go ahead and start any kind of um, remote access then it will probably start so uh, that's how it looks like so i'll just quickly go ahead and uh, execute uh, payload or i'll just go ahead and start i'll just type let's say use payload windows and uh, I don't know exactly how it works. Let me check if O works. I believe it should be the capital O that should work. Never mind. I'll just go ahead and start up my social engineering toolkit. That would be much more easy for me to go ahead and start up the payload. And I'll create a payload and listener. My IP address. Now this is my IP address. So I'll just copy it and paste it over here. Uh, it would be two, I believe. And uh, every time I go ahead and use the backdoor executable, let's go ahead and check what Shikata Ganai does. So port would be 443. And by the time it's executed, let me go ahead and disable my firewall because else it will go ahead and not allow me to copy it. Just for the time being, I'll disable this I'll minimize this and your payload is copied so I'll just go ahead and start the directory I typed yes right yeah perfect so I'll just go down into the where it is exactly SCT home directory so I believe SCT will be over in the root folder or USR Okay, here we have the payload file. Just copy it and paste it over here. Oh, what is this exactly? Because just copy it, paste it over here perfectly. And I'll just copy it and paste it over here. So, yep, that's how it looks like.